Hello, this is Mike from Traywinds RV Center. Here to congratulate you on your Flagstaff Castling 832 BWS Travel Trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a couple things to take into consideration when you're parking this. On your campsite, not only leave room for your slide, but your awning is going to come out even further, both of them. On your off campsite, besides thinking about your slides, three of them, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. And of course, on this, you already know, they're all on the rear. Power going to plug in the rear corner of uh, the off camp side. City water connection for campsites is going to plug in on the rear here. So park accordingly so we can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive and unhook our hitch, first thing we're going to do is level our unit. And it comes with a Lipper Smart Jack. Night dock and light should you arrive at night. Simply raise or lower until your level. Now, you do have your hand crank that you can get on this and get that up and down should you lose power. Speaking of power, check your battery post every now and then. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. Once we get our unit level, next we're going to do is stabilize it. You've also got power stabilizing jacks. Uh, short distance to run these down when this is level. So before I do, I'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of these from dirt and debris and hot black top in the summer. Just come up here and hit extend. Put them down underneath these. Uh, grab a four pack from the store with your 10% off coupon. Put them down underneath these and run them down just until they're taut. Remember, our unit's already level, so once it feels like it's going to start lifting, go ahead and stop. Get them down, go ahead and come to the rear, repeat the same process. The buttons on the off camp. Here they are, on the rear here. Extend right here, run these down. Let's get your unit level and stable. We'll go ahead and hook up our power water. See a big long 50 amp cord, plugs in here on the rear. Goes on, and then wiggle to the right, and then put your washer on. It'll lock that on there for you. Now, at the end of that 50, should you need to plug into a camp that has 30, and your convenience pack will be a 50 to 30 dog bone, they call it. And then if you ever need to plug into a 110, put this 30 to 15 amp reducer on the end of that. That's your power hooked up. Let's hook up your water. At campsites, we're going to hook up at City Water Connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so always use these. Hook that up, hook up your hose. Don't turn your hose on yet, though. Let's find your hot water heater. Yours is located way up here. And all we're doing at this point, folks, we're putting our drain plug back in and on rod uh, put plumber's tape around that not putty putty will gum up on you throw some plumber's tape on that get that in there i believe that's an inch and an eighth get that in there nice and snug then we can go ahead and turn that hose on all right we can go ahead and turn that hose on then we're going to go inside we're going to open up our slides the reason we're going to open up our slides is so that we can get in there and open up all of our water lines sinks showers anywhere the water comes out open them up get a nice steady flow of water going through shut them off and you're all set to camp now let's say we're not going to go dry uh camping at a campsite we're going to go dry camping with this or boondock we like to call it here's where you'll fill your fresh water tank right underneath your power and no need for a water pressure regulator here um just gravity fill this with a hose Two ways to tell when it's full. One is an overflow valve right here. Or two, have someone go on the inside and press the fresh water tank button and keep an eye on that while you're filling it. Once that's full, remove that hose, put this cap on, and then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. 
Don't turn on your water pump when using the city water. That's already pressurized. I'll show you where to do that indoors as well. All right, we're all set to camp, power, water. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. I'm gonna continue right here on the back with this docking station. So again, we got our city water connection. There's where you plug in your cable. Satellite, if you got your own satellite. Tank flush, we'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks, or our black tank in particular. Antifreeze inlet, this is where you will uh, inlet your antifreeze after bypassing uh, water heater indoors. Hot and cold shower is the spray port hose that'll hook up to this. Spray port hose will hook up to that as well. Uh, here's your stabilizing jacks again. You've got a connection for a bumper griddle. Got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a few times a year, check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with the recommended RV roofing caulk. Maintaining the roof of your RV is one of the most important things in uh, keeping the longevity of the life of this together. You also prep for a backup camera, a device you can purchase. One part sets on the dash your tow vehicle, another part attaches to that. Accessory hitch. Again, our power and our uh, fresh water inlet. Come around the campsite, you do got a docking light back here as well. Here's your flip out griddle. Quick connect hose will connect right there. This is the quick connect for a bumper griddle. There's that. Fridge, connections up there. Light in them out here. Here's your hot water heater. So something I want to mention on this, if your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, come out here to see if either one of these are bubbled up. If they are, simply press them back in. Here are overheat re, uh, reset. Extra info in case you need it. Couple of vents for your flue for your furnace. Couple things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you are running your furnace to clear that, it does get hot. I want to mention on your outdoor griddle, make sure you um, lock those for travel. On your slides, you got a lot of them. Get a couple cans of wiper, uh, wiper seal or slide seal lubricant. Spray these a few times a year. You want these to stay nice and flexible and pliable. They're in the sun a lot. Spray them, keep them flex flexible. It's going to add again to the longevity of the life of this. A nice storage here in your slide. A couple of outdoor speakers. Your awning here, which has a light. Another awning over here. Uh, down here, your prep for a TV. TV will snap on here. Cable. 110. 110 also, you got a table that'll set here. This will hold your door open. These holes here are manuals. Overrides for your slides. You can get your hand crank in there. Prep for solar. Plug in solar here and that'll trickle charge your batteries. Got a docking light up front here. Your propane does have a cover on a regulator, just lefty loosey. Uh, when you got gas in these, that'll turn green. I like going one tank at a time. That way I know how much I've got left. Torquing information. And here's that table, the griddle I told you about. The legs for it are taped up top there. Spray port hose. A bag for your power cord. Back here is your low point drain. And your black and gray tanks. You're also going to have a hood vent for your range. Back here is going to be your extra galley tank. Underneath your fresh water is going to be your fresh water drain, that white handle to pull right there. And that about covers everything out here. So take a look on the inside. All right, coming up beside your unit. I always like to point out the fire extinguisher first. Just make sure that you and everyone is camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway. Coming in immediately, control panel, lots of stuff here. Let's go ahead and just turn on a bunch of lights first. 
awning, step, entry, two interiors, and the bedroom. Now that we got some lighting, we can see what's going on here. Uh, this is flickering on your control panel, or I mean on uh, your video, but not in person. So let's start up top. Go Power Solar Controller. Whole purpose of this is to uh, keep your solar panels from overcharging your battery. Your main concern is to make sure that you keep it on your flooded battery. If that's the type of battery you have. Put that on B and then just hold that back in. I'll send you a separate video from Go Power on this controller. You can control everything down here with an app. Awning, slide outs, and lights, very cool. Get the app, put it on your phone, App Store, Google Play, stand outside and watch your slides come out. Down here, Wi Fi Ranger. I'll send you a video from Flagstaff on how to hook that up. Now, our control panel. Here's show you fresh, black, and gray takes uh, empty. The fresh water ones, that's what I said to keep an eye on when you're filling it up. Over here is brand new battery. Our lights again, Bluetooth connection, Wi Fi booster. That's this Wi Fi Ranger here. Water heater hooked to gas, water heater hooked to electric. It does make a difference. Water pump over here is where you turn on water pump to get to that fresh water. And tank heaters. This is just a little 12 volt pad um, on your tanks to keep them from freezing if you're in inclement weather. That's where you turn that on. Awning controls, you got three of them, and slides. We'll utilize those when leaving the campsite. I will say on your awning, I'm going to start extending number one out real quick. And just tell you that when you run these out, you only want to run it out until you can see a brow, your uh, brown bar and the flap has fallen down to 90 degrees. We're in the south to that point. Show you what I'm talking about. Might, uh, might be able to get that far so there's our flap when that flap falls down that's as far as you want to go um if you were to hold that flat button down that flap will come down and then start to roll up onto itself and roll onto itself backwards so keep an eye on it when you're running out so you don't run it out further than you need to as i continue to run them in I'm going to mention your tire pressure monitoring system from TST. They have a video on how to hook that up. And then over here is our thermostat. I'll run that. After I tell you this, slam locks work best when gently slammed. All right, our thermostat. I'm just going to show you real quick. You've got off cool heat gas and off i believe you can go to heat gas change that mode to heat electric or heat off excuse me heat gas heat electric and heat off and then just hold that in and shut that off. Come in the living room. Remote for your TV here. Sound system. Fireplace. Fireplace, not just for looks anymore. If you're plugged in at a campsite, turn that on and it'll get it toasty in here in no time. Why, don't waste your gas if you're plugged in and you want to warm it up in here. Around the corner here is going to be your thermostat. Excuse me. Your breaker box and fuses. You got a handful of 15s, ton of 15s, a couple 20s, and a 5. Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go out. This is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. That is always running off your battery. Around the corner of your fridge here, you've got the safety strap. Lock to keep that from bouncing on you when you're traveling down the road. Self explanatory microwave. Huge one. Light and fan above your cooktop. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light. Turn this to high. Hit your spark. That lights up. 
Same thing on all three of them and your oven. Hit your spark there. Or turn that to high. Hit your spark. Get up underneath there and you'll be able to see like the reflection. If you don't have your panel light on, if you shut, keep that off, you'll see the reflection of the um, pilot light on the bottom there when that lights up. Or you can turn on your oven light. Bag full of uh, information on all of your appliances. Check that out. If you have a 110 up here, you can plug in a coffee pot up in there. Your island does have a 110 on the side, as well as, here it is, 110 with GFCI reset on this end. Speaking of your sink, this nice little drying rack, it'll roll up for you. Plumbing. So it's almost all pecs nowadays. Here's your plumbing. Keep an eye on it. Maintain it. Make sure uh, nothing's wiggled loose if you travel a lot in this. Make sure nothing wiggles loose as you're going down the road. 110 there. A coffee bar area here with charging ports. Your table. By pushing this yellow piece to the side. If you see that unhooks there. That will jackknife down. Sit onto these rubber stoppers. Put your flat cushions on back for another sleeping area. And then your old sofa here. Just remove your Velcro cushions. Stand in the middle. Lift this up and pull your legs out. Pull the rear down. Just that quickly. You've got another sleeping area here. Make sure when you put this away that you lift the back up first. That's very important. Otherwise, you will damage this. Put the fingers in, you jack back and back down. You turn your cushions and just that quickly, you are back to the sofa. We're going to take off from here and go back into the bunk area. So you got plastic on the bunks. I want to show you. This one will travel up. I mean, we'll lift up. This bed will do the exact same thing. This sofa will do the exact same thing we just did out there. Uh, you can travel with this one up because it's got the hydraulics. Most of these, I like to tell people to bring them down for travel. Over here, you've got your own entertainment center. It's an ETV with sound system. Make sure you read the manual on that. Here's the ladder for this top bunk. A hand crank open vent back here. And one thing I will say is important back here, bring the remote out, is just make sure that everything's tucked away when you're getting ready to travel so that when you bring this slide in, that nothing's gonna get bothered. Let's head on back to our bedroom. 110 here, huge closet that is washer dryer prepped. So you can you got plenty of room for a stackable in here. Washer and dryer right there. A little bit of storage up underneath your bed on the drawers, but that's access to your outdoor storage as well. So make sure you keep that locked. AC sensor, so this is prepped for an AC. You can put a second AC in here. Here's a door that you want snapped open for travel, and that's your bedroom to bathroom door. You don't want that bouncing around if you go down the road. Same thing with this one. Make sure you have this snapped closed for travel. A little more plumbing to check, keep an eye on. We do got lighting here with the max air vent. Turn that on, turn that on, and it'll open up and crank out your air. Four different settings on that, or you simply hit off, and it will shut off and close. 110 with GFCI in here as well. Behind that door is access to your plumbing. Couple of lights to make sure I shut off on the way out. 
All your pep for TV here as well. Here's your backer. There's all your connections for it. Emergency exit window there. Another room that you want to make sure everything's closed for travel. That's it. That about covers everything in here. Let's act like we're getting ready to leave the campsite and close the unit up. There is your water filter. We never installed them. I'm not sure who, um, if people want to use them or not. So, about covers everything. Let's go ahead and close the unit up. I like to start by shutting off all my lights. Then I can see any lights that may need to be shut off individually had these been on. Bedrooms are all done. Closed. Now I'm going to just hit my interior and say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed, especially these. The, I mean, everyone throughout the unit, because any of these can get caught on our slide as we come in. So keep an eye on them. Make sure everything's closed. And we'll start with slide number one in. Here we go. Campsite. Four slides on this unit. And as they get in, I want you to hear that noise. That is just the slide mechanism saying I'm in all the way. Take your finger off the button. Same thing right now. Slide number two is our bunk room. I can hear it moving. Same noise. Slide number three. Sounds like our other bedroom. bedroom here I can hear it coming in again doors and drawers there was drawers all along that front wall that you want to make sure we're closed nothing will impede the slide from coming in or break when it does ready for the sound and lastly slide number four that'll be our big kitchen slide the heavy slide there with the fridge, the stove, and microwave all on it. The TV is on a swivel. That would come out and turn toward the kitchen or dinette better. See how we secured the kitchen fridge doors with our latch there as well. Run faster with power my little battery right now. Alright, that about covers everything. Shut off the interior lights and exit the unit. Now the biggest thing on these steps, whether bringing them up or down, you have to have this exterior door all the way open, otherwise this is going to catch on it when it comes in. Feet are also adjustable. Press up on this, these feet will move. See how close that came. That sits inside. Before we leave the dump station, and I say that because you're going to go inside and check the levels of your tanks right here in the door as we're dumping. But before you leave the dump station, lock, deadbolt. Lift and turn this handle. That's how you want that door to travel. All right. If we are out dry camping, we're going to bring up our stabilizing jacks. Come around to our back corner to our freshwater drain. Get up underneath there and pull that handle and head on home or to our nearest dump station whenever we're in need of. If we're at a campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable, bring up our stabilizing jacks, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. Now, at the dump station, park accordingly. First place you're going to dump is going to include your sewer outlet, so stop. When you're lined up with the one in front of your tires, 
You got a 10 foot hose comes your convenience pack. We're gonna hook that up. First thing we're gonna pull is sewer outlet connect. That's gonna be your black handle. It's gonna open this up and dump all of your sewage out. When that sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside, check the levels of your black tank. The show is empty, you're pretty darn close to it. Leave that black handle open, grab the hose at the dump station, and come to this tank flush. Hook that hose up, again emphasizing leaving the black tank open. Turn that hose on for a good five minutes. It's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, close that. Make sure that all that washout water you just put in there has drained out. And then we'll start to the left and pull our first gray holding tank. When that one shows empty, we'll pull gray tank number, we'll close that and pull gray tank number two. Remember, then we're cleaning the water, your sinks and showers. When that's, when that we're done, close them up, take your sewage hose, and if you got a longer one, if not, pull forward and come back here and hook up to this galley tank. We're going to pull that last. When that's done, we're going to take, close that up, go up here to our, usually while my last grays are dumping, we'll go to our low point drains, dump them. If we're done camping for a while, we don't want to leave stagnant water in your hot water heater. We're going to carefully lift up on this pressure release valve. So be careful, hot water is going to drop, come out of there. When that's done, push that back down and then pull your drain plug. Again, being careful, a little bit of hot water is going to come out of there. Do that after your low point drains are done. Be less water coming out of there. When it's done, make sure this is secure for travel. Now we're gonna take our sewage hose and conveniently, and more importantly, sanitarily, store it right here in the bumper and head on home. Yeah, well, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Flagstaff for many years to come. Happy camping!